The four worlds Hebrew, WLMWT Olamot, Alamos, singular, Olam WLM, sometimes counted with a prior stage to make five worlds, are the comprehensive categories of spiritual realms in Kabbalah in the descending chain of existence. The concept of worlds denotes the emanation of creative life force from the Ein Sof Divine Infinite, through progressive, innumerable simtzumim concealments, veilings, condensations. As such, God is described as the most hidden of all hidden, and Olam is etymologically related to, and sometimes spelled as, Lem noun, HLM Helem meaning, concealment. While these dimmings form innumerable differentiated spiritual levels, each a particular world, realm, nonetheless, through the mediation of the sephiro divine attributes, five comprehensive worlds emerge. Higher realms metaphorically denote greater revelation of the divine or light, in more open proximity to their source. Lower realms are capable of receiving only lesser creative flow. The worlds are garments of the Ein Sof, and Hasidic thought interprets their reality as only apparent to creation, while, from above, the divine infinite fills all equally. As particular sephiro dominate in each realm, so the primordial fifth world, Adam Kadman, is often excluded for its transcendence, and the four subsequent worlds are usually referred to. Their names are read out from Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Every one that is called by my name and for my glory Atsaluth. Emanation, close. I have created barrier. Creation. I have formed Yetzera. Formation. Even I have made Asiya. Action. Quote closing parenthesis dot. Below Asiya, the lowest spiritual world, is Asiya Gashmi. Physical Asiya, our physical universe, which includes its last two Sephiro emanations, Yesid and Malchut. Collectively, the four worlds are also referred to as Abiya, after their initial letters. As well as the functional role each world has in the process of creation, they also embody dimensions of consciousness within human experience. Enumeration The worlds are formed by the Or Mimile Kol Olman, the divine creative light that fills all worlds imminently, according to their particular spiritual capacity to receive. The ten Sephiro attributes and twelve basic Partzufim personas shine in each world, though not yet manifestly in Adam Kadman, as well as more specific divine manifestations. In Lurianic Kabbalah, the Partzufim dynamically interact with each other, and sublime levels are enclosed within lower existences, as their concealed soul. Nonetheless, in each world, particular Sephiro and Partzufim predominate. The five worlds in descending order Adam Kadman Ayam Kadamwan meaning primordial man. The anthropomorphic metaphor, Adam denotes the Yosha upright configuration of the Sephiro in the form of man, though not yet manifest. Kadman signifies primary of all primaries, the first pristine emanation, still united with the Ein Sof. Adam Kadman is the realm of Keta Elyon supernal crown of wool, the lucid and luminous light, Zixachot, the pure lucid Sephiro which are concealed and hidden. In potential, containing the future emergence of creation, it is divine light with no vessels, the manifestation of the specific divine plan for existence, within creation after the symptom in Lurianic Kabbalah. In Lurianism, the lights from a K precipitate Tohu and Tikkun. As Keta is elevated above the Sephiro, so Adam Kadman is supreme above the worlds, and generally only four worlds are referred to. Atsaluth, Isilut meaning world of emanation, also close. On this level, the light of the Ein Sof, infinite divine, without end, radiates and is still united with its source. This supernal revelation therefore precludes the souls and divine emanations in Atsalus from sensing their own existence. 
In Atsilas the ten Sephiro emerge in revelation, with Chokma wisdom dominating, all is nullification of essence to divinity, not considered created and separate. The last Sephira Malchut kingdom is the divine speech of Genesis chapter 1, through which lower worlds are sustained. Berar, Beriar, or alternatively Beriar, meaning world of creation. On this level is the first concept of creatio ex nihilo, however, without yet shape or form, as the creations of Beria sense their own existence, though in nullification of being to divinity. Beria is the realm of the divine throne, denoting the Sephiro configuration of Atsilas descending into Beria like a king on a throne. The Sephira Bina understanding predominates, divine intellect. Also called the Higher Garden of Eden. The highest ranking angels are in Beria. Yetzera, Yezir or meaning world of formation. On this level the created being assumes shape and form. The emotional Sephiro chest to Yesid predominate, the souls and angels of Yetzera worship through divine emotion and striving, as they sense their distance from the understanding of Beria. This ascent and descent channels the divine vitality down through the worlds, furthering the divine purpose. Therefore, in Yetzera are the main angels, such as Seraphim, denoting their burning consummation in divine emotion. Also called the Lower Garden of Eden. Asiya, Asiya meaning world of action. On this level the creation is complete, differentiated and particular, due to the concealment and diminution of the divine vitality. However, it is still on a spiritual level. The angels of Asiya function on the active level, as the Sephira Malchut fulfillment in kingship predominates. Below spiritual Asiya is Asiya Gashmi, Asiya physical Asiya. The final, lowest realm of existence, our material universe with all its creations. The last two Sephiro of Asiya channel the life force into physical Asiya. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning These four worlds are spiritual, heavenly realms in a descending chain, although the lowest world of Asaya has both a spiritual and a physical aspect. The physical level of Asaya is our physical finite realm, including the cosmological universe studied by science. Consequently, as Kabbalah is a metaphysical study, its reference to all light is a metaphor for divine emanation, and the terms higher and Lower, are metaphors for closer and further from divine consciousness and revelation. The 16th century systemization of Kabbalah by Moshe Cordovero brought the preceding interpretations and schools into their first complete rational synthesis. Subsequent doctrines of Kabbalah from Isaac Luria describe an initial symptom withdrawal of the universal divine consciousness that preceded creation to allow room for created beings on lower levels of consciousness. Lower levels of consciousness require the self-perception of independent existence, by the created beings on each level, to prevent their loss of identity before the magnificence of God. This illusion increases with more force in each subsequent descending realm. The number of graduations between the infinite and the finite, is likewise infinite, and arises from innumerable, progressively strong concealments of the divine light. Nonetheless, the four worlds represent fundamental categories of divine consciousness from each other, which delineates their four descriptions. Consequently, each world also psychologically represents a spiritual rung of ascent in human consciousness, as it approaches the divine. Kabbalah distinguishes between two types of divine light that emanate through the ten sephiro divine emanations from the infinite Ein Sof, to create or affect reality. The continual flow of an immanent lower light, Mimale Kol Ulman, the light that fills all worlds, is the creating force in each descending world that itself continually brings into being from nothing, everything in that level of existence. 
It is this light that undergoes the concealments and contractions as it descends downward to create the next level, and adapts itself to the capacity of each created being on each level. A transcendent higher light, Sovif Kol Ulman, the light that surrounds all worlds would be the manifestation on a particular level of a higher light above the capacity of that realm to contain. This is ultimately rooted in the infinite light, or Ein Sof, that preceded creation, the Simtsum and the Sephiro, rather than the source of the immanent light in the Kav, first emanation of creation after the Simtsum, in the teachings of Isaac Luria. Consequently, all the worlds are dependent for their continual existence on the flow of divinity they constantly receive from the divine will to create them. Creation is continuous. The faculty of divine will is represented in the Sephiro ten divine emanations by the first, supra-conscious Sephiro of Keta crown, that transcends the lower nine Sephiro of conscious intellect and emotion. Once the divine will is manifest, then it actualizes creation through divine intellect, and subsequently, divine emotion, until it results in action. The reference to temporal cause and effect is itself a metaphor. The psychology of man also reflects the divine psychology of the Sephiro, as man is created in the image of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. In man the activation of willpower through intellect and emotion until deed, requires time and subsequent cause and effect. In the divine Sephiro and their activation of creation, this does not apply, as limitations only apply to creation. The Book of Job states that, "...from my flesh I see God." In Kabbalah and Hasidism this is understood to refer to the correspondence between the "...divine psychology." of the four worlds and the Sephiro, with human psychology and the Sephiro in the soul of man. From understanding the Kabbalistic description of the human soul, we can grasp the meaning of the divine scheme. Ultimately, this is seen as the reason that God chose to emanate his divinity through the ten Sephiro, and chose to create the corresponding chain of four worlds, called the Seder Hishtalshalis, Order of Development. He could have chosen to bridge the infinite gap between the Ein Sof and our world by a leap of divine decree. Instead the Sephiro and four worlds allow man to understand divinity through divine manifestation, by understanding himself. The verse in Genesis of this correspondence also describes the feminine half of creation, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them." Consequently, some of the Sephiro are feminine, and the Shechina immanent divine presence is seen as feminine. It is the intimate relationship between the divine scheme of four world and man, that allows man's ascent more easily to divine consciousness see Devakis. Topic. Correspondences Topic. See also Anthropomorphism in Kabbalah Masaket Azalut Hazulam Mind-body problem Popper's Three Worlds